Welcome! This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 22nd of August 2011. As a special bonus, I'm going to show you a video of the latest images from the stereo spacecraft of Elmin. But first, man's desire to fly certainly eventually led to the space program. But today is a rather dubious anniversary in our efforts to fly. It is the anniversary of the first air raid on a city. So today's trivia question is which city was the air raid directed at and in what year did it occur? The answer will be given at the end. Well, solar activity has certainly picked up. The number of flares we've had has doubled. That means we've had two C flares. And the X-ray background has risen to the B2 level. Will there be no end to all this excitement? Now I note out of the corner of my eye that uh, the GOES plot is showing that we actually got a third C flare underway as, as I put this together. Uh, so my forecast today that C flares are likely has already been proven right. Now honestly, I, when I put that together, I did not know this C flare was happening. So let's take a look at the sunspot regions and see what's been going on. We now have four officially numbered regions on the disk. Now let's take a look at each of them in detail. Region 1271 is a surprise. That is the one that's been growing in the last 24 hours. Here's what it looked like yesterday, and here is what it looks like today. You notice there's been a large amount of growth in the north east part of the region, whereas the trailer spot seems to have decayed quite a lot. Next we'll take a look at region 1272. Once again, here's what it looked like yesterday, and here's what it looks like today. I'm not quite sure what to say about this one. Some parts of it seem to have grown, other parts of it seem to have simplified. What do you think? Lastly, let's take a look at regions 1274 and 1275 on the northeast limb. This is what they looked like yesterday when they were just coming over the limb. And this is what they look like today. And you can see there are two small regions following on behind them. So there's really four regions here. However, all of them are relatively small and relatively simple. So I don't think we're going to see a lot of activity from them as yet. The northern two regions are the remnants of regions 1260 and 1261 you can see that they've decayed significantly over the last two weeks while they've been on the far side of the sun. The two regions in the south are brand new, so we don't know whether they are growing or the decay of a short-lived region. So overall, activity has been fairly low for the last few days, but it is showing some signs of increasing. So fingers crossed. So how have these regions evolved over the last 24 to 48 hours? For the sunspot and magnetic movies, I'd like you to concentrate totally on region 1271 and see the, all the new growth that's occurred in that region, particularly in, particularly in the magnetic movie. And again, you'll probably want to go into full screen mode to see the data properly. In the transition region movie from the AIA instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory, I'd like you to concentrate on the northeast limb. There is a very large eruption there, although it's only caught for a few seconds in the actual video itself. But I'm hoping that this is indication that 1263, when it returns, will still be very active, because it's about from the right place. In the low temperature coronal movie, I'd like you to concentrate on the regions 1274, 1275, and those two small regions following. Try to gauge their activity levels and compare it with what's behind the limb, for there's still parts of this region due to come over in the next 24 hours. And tomorrow we should start seeing the first indications of region 1263 directly behind the limb. So that should be exciting. In the high temperature coronal image you can see the coronal hole is now fully in the western hemisphere and should be starting to affect us. So we should look for clues of that in the solar wind data that's coming up in a minute. Unfortunately the coronograph, unfortunately the Soho coronograph data stops before the time of the eruption that we saw in the AIA transition region image. But it should be visible in tomorrow's data, so we'll take a look for it there. Now embedded in the C3 movie, there is a frame that looks like this. Don't get worried about fleets of alien spacecraft. All this is is debris orbiting around the SOHO spacecraft. In the solar wind data, we see that the temperature of the solar wind hasn't changed very much. The density has been bouncing around all over the place, but has gone back to basically below one proton per cubic centimeter. And perhaps the velocity has increased slightly but we're definitely not seeing any sign of this coronal hole. The high energy electron flux seems to have dropped yet further and we still have no proton events. The rural zone looks a lot more active than it did yesterday but the KP index is showing little sign of change varying between 0 and 2. So in summary then, the X-ray background has risen to the B2 level, the sunspot number has increased to 66, the radio sun intensity has increased to 101 solar flux units, 
Solar wind speed has dropped slightly at 390 kilometers per second, but with a density of between 1 and 2 protons per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are rated as quiet. My forecast for the next 24 hours are that C flares are likely, M flares are possible but unlikely, and X flares are very unlikely. The sunspot number should drift higher. We still have a good likelihood of getting coronal mass ejections. Solar wind speed should edge higher with this coronal hole. From the composite coronal image we can see that region 1263 is still two or three days behind the east limb, but we should start seeing the first evidence of it tomorrow. Our answer to our trivia question about which city was first subject to an air raid and when is Venice, quite appropriate for the music that I'm playing in the background here, and it was in 1849. Yes, poor old Venice was subject to an air raid by balloons, believe it or not. As promised at the beginning, here is the video of Elnin taken from the Stereo B spacecraft, directly viewed in its H1 field of view. Elnin is a bright object going from right to left across the field of view relatively rapidly. The other bright object that's moving in the same direction but more slowly is Mercury. So I'm pleased to report that Mercury wasn't in fact destroyed, it's still there and visible. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.